everyone, it's Gina and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Curly Hair Care for Beginners playlist where we go over all things naturally curly hair and I walk you through how you can go from damaged hair to healthy curls and I break it down in simple, easy to follow steps. So today we're gonna be breaking down how to actually diffuse your hair. You guys know I'm a big fan of diffusing my hair if you followed my videos for a while. Some of you might not like to diffuse and you prefer to air dry and I have to say that that is definitely the way to go. If you can get good results from air drying, it's 100% healthier for your hair to not use heat on it. Um, but I have, you know, 3A curls, sometimes 3B curls, and they're also fine. And I think I have high porosity hair too. And it tends to really fall if I just air dry and it just looks very flat because it is low density. You know, I don't have a ton of hair. So I'm really trying to get good volume, which is why I like to diffuse. If I just air dry, it just looks flat. And a lot of times my ends look stringy because it is a thinner texture. Um, and I do have a looser curl pattern. So I really like diffusing to help with shrinkage because I like that shrinkage because it gives me more curl definition. Um, but a lot of you have you know seen me diffuse my hair in my routines but I did want to kind of share with you an updated routine that I've been doing to help reduce frizz so I'm gonna walk you through actually how I have been diffusing my hair and I've really been liking my results if you notice my hair looks different it's because I did diffuse it differently it's a little bit more elongated I don't have quite as much volume um, but I still have pretty good definition but I kind of like how I'm not getting as much shrinkage with this method um, but I still have great definition somehow which is hard for me so the dryer that I'm gonna be using is this one by Conair. This is the Infinity Pro. I think it's called like the texture or something another. I did order this on Amazon. It was very affordable. I believe it was around 30, maybe $40 max. Hopefully it's still available on there, but it's very affordable. It's made for textured hair. So it does come with the diffuser attachment already. So you know it's going to fit, which I like that it comes with that. One of my favorite things about this diffuser is it does have those teeth on it that sit outside of the diffuser bowl. I really like using those to get volume at my root. I like how this dryer has three different temperature settings and it has two airflow settings and it has the cold shut button. So you want to make sure you get a dryer that does have like a cool or a warm setting on it because we don't want to be using too hot of heat. I was using a dryer previously um, before I got this that just got too hot. Even on the lowest heat setting, it was like burning my hand or burning my scalp and I got so many split ends all the time from it. Um, and I don't use any flat irons or anything and I was still getting split ends, which is crazy because you shouldn't be getting split ends just from a diffuser. Um, if you guys find that it takes too long to get your hair dry, then you can try the hot setting. Even the hottest setting um, doesn't burn me or anything. I think that's still okay to use when you're really struggling to get your hair dry quick. So here's a couple things that you can adjust if you find that you get too much frizz when you're diffusing. So for one, it really depends on the products that I use. I like to use Stronghold products as my finishing product. So I usually use a curl cream or a, like a leave-in conditioner first, and then I will use a sealing product. And for me, sealers are either gel or mousse, and those are gonna help give my hair that cast that it needs to help hold it throughout the week. Also it locks in the moisture that's in my hair and it prevents frizz. If you have that nice cast on your hair, that's gonna protect your hair when you're diffusing from getting frizzy. So if you find that you always get frizz when you diffuse, it could be that you don't have enough hold in your hair. And if you're afraid of having too much hold and you don't like that cast on your hair, just know that you can always scrunch it out at the end. I've talked about before a lot of my favorite gels that are strong hold. If you saw the last video that I did all about how to go longer in between your washes, I featured some of my favorite styling gels and mousse that I like to use to get that cast on my hair. So one thing you can do is kind of adjust the time that you actually start diffusing. Some people like to air dry, you know, like 80 or 90 percent of the way and then diffuse at the very end some people like to diffuse at first and then air dry the rest of the way which is what i like to do um, because if you're just trying to diffuse your hair for like 30 or 40 minutes and trying to get your hair 100 percent dry if you're starting with soaking wet hair that's going to take so long it's a lot harder on the hair you're going to have more frizz that way so if you're trying to go from like soaking wet hair to completely dry then you're probably going to get frizz so i definitely recommend you know maybe applying your styling products going and doing your makeup doing other things and then diffusing right before you leave if you're getting ready um, that will help kind of air dry your hair a little bit you can even you know turn on your fan while you're doing your makeup sometimes i do that or you can plop your hair 
So the other thing I like to use is a hair repair towel, which is a flat cotton towel. This is a really big towel. Um, I do have a code for this. I think I'll put it down below. Um, but they're really affordable and they're great to have because it's a little bit better than using a t-shirt, which is my other recommendation to use. Um, but it's just bigger, so it's easier to work with and it's more absorbent. But if you don't have this, you can use a cotton t-shirt. Just anything that's flat and doesn't have any fibers on it, you don't wanna use a bath towel for this. Um, and you can scrunch out any of the excess water. You can either do this before you apply your styling products or you could do it after. But just scrunching your hair a little bit before you start diffusing is gonna absorb some of that excess water. Um, you can even plop your hair, so I like to do that sometimes too, which is what I did today. So I applied my styling gel and everything. I scrunched with my hands. I scrunched with the towel a little bit. And then I plopped my hair on top of my head and tied the towel around it. I do have a video I'll link below on how to actually plop your hair, but I usually do that sometimes when I'm doing my makeup, so I'll let it sit for 30 minutes or so up on top of my head, and that just helps absorb any excess water and lets it kind of rest after styling it um, before I actually start to fuse. So after taking my hair down out of the hair repair towel, I'm actually gonna spread that towel out across on my counter. So this is the new method I was telling you guys about. Um, if you've seen my previous videos on how to diffuse or my previous styling routines, I always use the diffuser like right up against my hair and I just kind of, you know, plop all my hair in it and lift it up to my scalp. And that is a great method to actually get really good definition. If you're trying to enhance your curls and make them a lot tighter, then you could do that method. But just keep in mind, sometimes you can get frizz on your ends or your ends might dry too quickly compared to the rest of your hair. Um, because you're touching the dryer to it, you know, the airflow is going up the hair shaft versus down it and that could create some frizz as well. So if you have dry ends or damaged hair, then you might wanna try this new method that I'm gonna do. So with this new method, I'm actually plopping my hair on top of my counter. So I spread the hair repair towel out and that just helps you know, protect my hair from sticking against the counter and that's not gonna cause any frizz or anything because like I said, it's flat, has no fibers on it that are gonna cling to my hair and cause frizz. Um, you could spread out a t-shirt or like a pillowcase or something and just plopping your head over it is gonna help give you that good definition. That's what the plopping does is I'm gathering all my hair down to the flat surface and then pressing it up towards my scalp and then I'm hovering the diffuser around it. So the diffuser is not actually touching directly to my ends, which is gonna prevent them from frizzing up. Um, it's just touching the towel, which um, I do sometimes touch the teeth of the diffuser to my scalp and that's just to help get the air down on the scalp a lot quicker. Um, if I don't do this, the scalp just will not dry at all. Um, so this does help also with volume. I don't usually get any frizz at my scalp from doing this. I just don't hold it too long. And you'll see that I kind of move it around a lot just to kind of make everything dry even. That way I don't have one area drying too fast compared to the other side that might still be wet. So with this dryer, since it doesn't get too hot, I would say it probably takes me like anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 minutes to dry my hair, depending on when I start diffusing and how much water is already in my hair. Another thing that can help the length of time is if you use a product like a mousse or just a gel, a lot of times my hair dries a lot quicker when I use mousse. If I use a lot of moisturizing products like some heavy curl creams, butters, you know, leave-in conditioners, all that stuff, there's a lot more moisture and water in our hair when we do that, so it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. So just keep that in mind, you know, if you don't have dry hair and you don't need as much moisture, then maybe skip the cream and just go straight to a gel or a mousse and it won't take as long to dry. So another thing you can do if you struggle with frizz is actually turn your dryer off in between moving it around. So if you are actually touching the diffuser to your hair, you can leave it off, touch it to your hair, turn it on, and then actually turn it off when you pull your diffuser away from your hair or turn it off before you pull it away from your hair. And that will sometimes help prevent frizz versus just like moving it all around while the air is still flowing, that can kind of blow your hair everywhere and cause frizz. So you'll see I get in a lot of kind of awkward positions when trying to get my hair plopped on the counter, um, especially underneath it's really tough because I kind of have to lean to the side to get my hair to plop underneath. If I don't plop to the side, then I can't get that underside layer to shrink up and it will hang longer than the rest because a lot of those curls that I have underneath hang a lot longer than the rest of my hair. They're just looser in nature. Um, so I really have to try to plop those kind of sideways and then diffuse so I'm doing a combination of diffusing from the underside and also diffusing from the outside just to make sure that airflow is even but one of my subscribers actually commented on a recent video maybe it was on Instagram and she gave me a really great idea to try diffusing with my hair plopped down in my sink and she said she's had good results with this that was a great idea so thank you um, but what you can do is take your towel and lay it across the sink if you don't want to put your hair right in your sink um, you can use your t-shirt too and then she said you just 
put your diffuser down in your sink and that kind of circulates the air around the bowl of the sink or you could probably use a big bowl if you had one. Um, it's similar to like a hooded dryer where you're keeping that airflow kind of circulating around um, and that helps kind of dry everything all at once versus you know when I just have my hair out on my counter I'm having to move my arm around a lot to make sure I'm evenly coating my hair with the air. Um, so that did work really well. The only problem that I had with this was my hair is long and so I didn't feel like I was plopping it as high up um, because I wasn't able to get my hair down in my sink as much. So it really just depends on your sink setup. You obviously want to be very careful to not accidentally turn on your water and electrocute yourself. Um, so you have to be careful when you're doing this, but I did kind of like the idea so I wanted to share it. So then another thing you can do if you don't want to plop your head over, and I still like to do this to get volume, is I will flip all my hair to one side and then diffuse on the other side and that helps kind of give your hair a volume because you're drying it in the other direction direction and then you can flip it over and do the other side and you're kind of drying your roots in the opposite direction so then when you flop back over they have good volume at the roots. Now I do actually touch the teeth to my roots and again that's just to get more volume for me. I don't tend to get frizz at my roots as bad so this definitely helps give my fine hair some volume. So then I just like to finish off right side up and for that you know if I still need to kind of get my ends to shrink up I will just take my hand and cut my hand and then hover the diffuser around. So that's another good way to kind of help um, spring your ends up if they do tend to get stringy and fall flat. It's just use your hand. Um, you wanna make sure though that your hand is clean and dry. You don't wanna have any leftover product or, or um, gel or anything on your hand because that can stick to your hair and cause frizz as it's drying. So it's really important for your hands to be dry. Um, you don't wanna to touch your hair too much when it's diffusing, you know, flipping it around too much or touching it with your hands is gonna disturb that curl cast and potentially cause for it. So now that I'm done pretty much diffusing, I feel like it's been maybe 20 minutes or so, I'm probably 85% dry, maybe 90% dry, probably about 90%. I'm just gonna let my hair air dry the rest of the way and that helps prevent frizz. Like I said, you can diffuse your hair too long, which will cause a lot of frizz. Another thing that you don't wanna do is kind of obsess over the frizz before it's completely dry because sometimes it'll surprise you and it'll be completely dry and you won't have the frizz. If you see wet frizz forming, it doesn't always turn into frizz when it's dry I've noticed so I don't like to try to mess with it and do too much and touch it up too much until it's completely dry. So one thing you can do if you do develop some frizz on your ends is just take some more of your gel or your mousse that you use, dilute it with some water and just smooth over those ends to kind of seal it in place. You could even go in and diffuse those ends once more to set that in place and that's a good way to kind of touch up any frizzy areas. But if I use a good gel in the beginning then I don't usually have to do this. If you have issues with halo frizz, so frizz forming around the roots, what I would recommend is again taking some of that gel mixing it with water in your hand just so it's not so strong and just kind of smoothing down like this um, you could use a hairspray I really like the bounce curl hairspray that one's great for humidity just to kind of smooth down any flyaways that might have formed um, and then just let it be don't touch it too much let that product completely dry and let it completely set into place before you start messing with it so now that my hair is completely dry and good to go I feel like I can finally go in and fluff and scrunch out the crunch now I like to wait a little bit before I do this, but all I do is flip my head over, shake out my roots a lot, I scrunch it all across my head, and sometimes I'll add some oil to my hand when I do this. Um, and if you scrunch out the crunch with oil, it kind of helps disperse the crunch a little bit to where it's not quite as crunchy and it just kind of softens it. Or a lot of times I'll just use my dry hands. Um, but like I said before about touching your hair when it's drying, also when it's completely dry, you want your hands to be totally clean and dry and not sticky because your hair is just gonna stick to it and cause frizz. So again, have dry hands when you are scrunching it. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will have all the products I mentioned listed out on the blog post that goes with this video, which is always the first link in the description box down below. And you can also check out the rest of the Curly Hair Care for Beginners playlist. I will link that here in the info card so you can check that out. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not already subscribed, I would love for you to join my YouTube family and I hope to see you back next week. Bye everyone.